Well, hello, friends, family, foes, enemies, men, women, and undecided. I am wearing my John Fetterman business attire, and I am here to bring you not the Daily Show, the Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Ellen, Jimmy Oprah, Jimmy Stephen Colbert, or the Jimmy Trevor No Laugh Show. You're watching The Right Show. We come in at the right place at the right time each and every week, normally Wednesday. Today, Thursday, we're going to hang out with Alex Primetime Stein, 99, pimp on a blimp. Laura Trump interviews me on her podcast. Biden doubles down on stupidity. Kanye tells the truth and it hurts. And my comedy special is now ready for pre-order. It all goes down right here on The Right Show, a support group for normal people. Buckle up. Here we go. Little roll call. YouTube is up 381,230 subscribers. Yes. If you're watching this, great. If you're listening going, what? There's a video? Yes. Just go in the description. There might be a link. You can click on it. We interact in here. I can put your comments up. It's very fun. So say whatever you want behind my back. Like this, Alex Stein is on the uh, on the feed right now. Uh, someone put that comment there. Jennifer Stevens wrote, oh my goodness, what was Pennsylvania thinking? So we're going to interact, which none of the other hosts want to do. They don't want to know you, but I do. So I want to know this. Where are you from and who is your favorite conservative? Mm. Cue the Jeopardy music. There's Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, Dennis Prager, DeSantis, Thomas Sowell. Trump, Alex Primetime Stein, 99. And by the way, you don't have to just say me. Pick someone other than me. We all know, in reality, your favorite is the half Persian. And while you're thinking about your favorites, also consider pre-ordering my new comedy special. It's called Essential. Why? Because the radical left called us non-essential. Anyone that wouldn't get the boost, non-essential. Anyone that was a comedian, artist, entertainer. Of course, if you worked at Walmart, Costco, Home Depot, you were essential. You kept your job, kept your family, kept your holidays intact. But other people were marginalized, small business owners. Anyone that wouldn't conform to the Joe Brandon movement or the Nancy Pelosi or the Gavin Grusom Newsom or the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. If you know who that is, put in the comments. It's the Chicago mayor. So, I decided to make a little comedy special that punches back. It is an hour-long special, 
full of jokes you're not allowed to hear on Netflix because they're too funny. Saturday Night Live, which I call Sorry Not Laughing, would definitely be improved if they put my humor there, but the only place you can get it is on my site. So I want to show you a sneak peek, never before seen, of the new comedy special, Essential. This is the first minute. Hi, man. I'm just excited to be back on stage again. I was called non-essential for the last two years. And when politicians call you non-essential, that really hurts. I was like, I was thinking the same thing about you, you know? <laughs> but it was crazy, man. Couldn't perform for two years. So I said, when I do my special, I want to go to either Texas, Florida, or Arizona. That's just what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to a state that did not participate in the pandemic. That way we could be just like a normal crowd. Uh, Arizona is like the Donald Trump of states. They're like, we're not doing a pandemic. No, thank you. We're not interested. <laughs> Business as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to opt out. Right? <laughs> and it was tough. I couldn't work for two years. Imagine what that's like. And my brother is a surgeon. My mom is a nurse. I was unemployed. I realized I am the Hunter Biden of my family. It was really... <laughs> Order the one-hour comedy special today. Now, it's actually a pre-order. The best way to get the full hour before anyone else is you go on GoFundMe.com slash Essential Kayvon. See it right there on the screen? Or if you don't want to use GoFundMe, which many people don't, it's just a very easy way to do it, then you just go on Venmo at KVON-KVON. Say, send me that new special. Or PayPal.me slash TanksGod and say, send me the new special. You're going to get it either way. You can put in $5, $10, $20. Someone put in $300. Yes, because when the mainstream media won't make your special for you and say, hey, this guy is great. This is, uh, this is Amy Schumer. You'll like her. We do it ourselves, and these clips are going to go viral. So you're going to become a producer. Whatever tip you put in the bucket, I will use it to promote the special. And if it goes viral... We're punching as hard as the Amy Schumer machine all by ourselves. We are a band of brothers and sisters and undecideds. All right. With that said, if you don't want to watch a special online, then just come to a live show. We've added so many dates. Take a look right here at some of the dates we've added. We have Huntington Beach tomorrow. Hope to see you there, Orange County. There's only 25 tickets left per show. How awesome is that? Thank you. Turning Point, Albany, New York. Turning Point, Wichita, Kansas. Turning Point, Edmond, Oklahoma. That's called Oklahoma Central University. Turning Point, Fairfax. That's George Mason University. And then we end in Irvine. And a final turning point is in Auburn Hills. Now, if you don't know what Turning Point is, they're the last bastion of freedom of speech on campus. This show right here I'm showing you is University of Albany. The school has decided to shut down the show and the students are fighting back saying, you already said we could do it. You know their excuse for why we can't do the show? They said it's because we posted it on Facebook. They said if you would have just tweeted about it or just put flyers around campus, that was fine. But as soon as you posted it on Facebook, we no longer want you to have the show. It's going to get too crazy. Now, I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they never said in the contract, don't post on Facebook. This is just an arbitrary rule they've made. So they've moved this to a different building. If you're coming to Albany, New York, tell me. I'll tell you the new building. We're keeping it secret so they don't keep canceling it. Wichita State University, Kansas, okay, the next day. Look at that. Albany to Kansas. Not many people can do that. Then I'm going to drive to Oklahoma from Kansas, okay, and the next day, which I don't have a flyer for yet, we're flying back to DC. So it's like a, it's a loop, hard, hard working, and it all ends with a freedom formal where I'm gonna dress nice and we're gonna do comedy. You can dress uh, to impress at a gala or a gala, depending if you're Paul Pelosi, it's a gala. If you're me, it's a gala on 12-3 in Shelby Gardens. So there you go. Now you all know where to find me. Perfect. Speaking of finding me, I was able to find another great conservative, Primetime 99 Alex Stein. If you've never seen his videos, he goes to town hall meetings, he terrorizes them, and he shoves woke culture in their face. Take a look at Primetime Stein. We're here in Frisco, Texas, and there's some guy knocking on the door. Let's get him in here. Who is it? None other than Primetime! Ah, people are blood! Let's go! Give me some shrimp. Yeah. Where's the shrimp? 
shrink that. Man, I'm going insane. Put in Ukraine. Put a bullet in. Oh, can't say. I'm with Kayvon. Say what's up, Pacino. We're on the we're on a pimp on a blimp, all right, guys. We just went insane. We're on a blimp tonight. We were. We were at the freaking Waterford Point. <laughs> this is where the play is. Been. Man, that guy was a lot of fun. I'd never met him before, but I'm a fan of his work. So when I invited him to a small comedy show with just 75 people in the audience, he's like, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> and we got along from, it was like we've been buddies since we were kids, man. That guy is awesome. He definitely is a pimp on a blimp. Every time you Google his name, he's confronting Beto O'Rourke. He's calling Alexander Ocasio-Cortez a big booty Latina, big juicy booty. <laughs> and, um. People go, how is he always in these places? I've never seen Alexander. I've never seen Trump. I've never, he's always in front of all these people. And I realize he has a blimp. He can quietly get around and drop himself right where he needs to be. That's why it pays to be both a pimp and own your own blimp. When we come back, a whole lot more show. This is The Right Show. Hurry, text your friends right now. Tell them to join. Remember a little while ago I told you that I wanted to have like baseball cards for conservatives and you collect them all kind of like pogs or just a collector's item. You know, you get your Alex Stein. So each guy I meet, I'm like, oh, I got my card. Like I've met Larry Elder through a podcast and we talked for 20 minutes. So I got my Larry Elder card. I got my Alex Primetime Stein card. Um, I've got my Laura Ingraham card. And so I'm just working my way through all the best. You know, you want to get the Thomas Sowell. Okay. Uh, put in the comments which conservative card you would want to collect before it's too late. I want to get the Trump card. That's huge. Um, it would be cool to get a little uh, Alex Jones card just to have it. Okay, it's kind of a uh, off, you know, a side a side card, not really a mainstream one. But uh, and then you want to get your your Elon Musk card, and some of you might want to get your Kayvon card. All right, so come see me at a live show. The point being, I finally collected a new card, the Lara Trump card. Yes. Now, for those of you who don't know, Laura Trump is Eric Trump's wife. She calls Donald father-in-law. Therefore, she wanted to interview the most famous half-Persian comedian in the world. We went from primetime Stein to Laura Trump, all in the matter of 48 hours. Check it out. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we're joined by comedian and host of The Right Show. I love that name. Currently on tour, Kayvon. First, I just want to say thank you for having me on. What an honor. And I'm a big fan of your whole family. But um, I'm so thank glad you. our podcasts have slightly different names because you could have sued me. And I don't have <laughs> the legal backing to take you down. I don't think I could do it. We could so. still probably finagle a way to, to make a lawsuit out of this. But we won't do that. We won't well, do I'm just, just kidding. I'm just glad we're on good terms still. You knew back when you were a kid that you had a, a bit of a knack for making people <laughs> laugh. And you just... We Channeled that into a career? It's funny because I thought I could do it as a kid, but there was no indication I was right at all. So <laughs> I'm just sitting there believing in myself for no reason. And um, and so when I got on stage the first time, there still was no reason. For the first five years, like everyone's like, what are you doing? I lost many friends, family members, girlfriends. Wow. But I just knew, I used to watch and David Letterman. I used to watch even Johnny Carson. We go back that far and Jay Leno. And I just loved how they could do a uh, interview and the stand up to opening monologue, kick it to a, a guest. I'm like, that would be the best job ever. Yeah. And so that's what I, I got into it, wanting to be the host of one of these late night shows. And in the last few years, late night ratings have gone further and further down. Mm -hmm. Big fan of Saturday Night Live. Now I call I call it Sorry Not Laughing, SNL. <laughs> Seriously. It, it's not funny anymore. And yeah. I like the uh, weekend update. I used to just love watching Dennis Miller just destroy whatever was in the news. And yeah. he would go left or right. Uh, now it's just a one-sided hit job. It's not funny. The ratings reflected. And if they put me on the show, we could write the shit. But I don't think they have the uh, interest in doing that. Oh, you heard it here first. Maybe uh, it would be a very smart move. Because I never understand why people want to alienate half of their audience. You know, in whatever it might be. You look at things that like Disney has done, for example, or, you know, you look at a Saturday Night Live, and I remember growing up, that used to be so much fun to watch, and I used to really enjoy it, and now it's just totally unwatchable. It's it's actually just disturbing to see that there are actually people who think this garbage that they're putting out is funny. When you kind of write your jokes, how does it work? Do you just observe out in the world and kind of see something that 
strikes you as funny and then jot it down like on your phone? Or how does this work for you? What's your process? So jokes can come from many ways. One is you're just thinking of something. One, you sit down with a pen and paper. That's usually the worst way because you're like, come to me, joke. Come. Yeah, yeah. One is just interacting with someone at a bar or at a game and go, oh, I'm writing that down. So our antenna are like octopus. It could come from one of eight ways. God, but I would be so nervous to hang out with you, Kayvon. What if yeah, you're yeah. like getting jokes out of me? I don't know what's happening. Uh, yeah, if you see me go to my phone and type something, it's either a text or uh, that's that's my new punchline coming. Yeah, I can't go to but, the show. But I'll give you an example of a joke that I wrote. And see, I want to talk about the things we're all talking about, but have my own unique angle. And that's why comedians are so boring on a lot of these big networks and on Netflix. Right. They're not allowed to take a new angle. I don't have an audience clap sign. So when I go out, it's me versus the audience. I go very creative into my joke. I'll give you a tough example. Uh, do you know who Leah Thomas is? She was one I of the sure worst do. male swimmers of all time. And just last year, she decided she's a woman. Now she's the number one female swimmer of all time. Now I want to talk about that, but how in front of 300 strangers? So I just go, look, I'm not going to make fun of her. Relax leftist. I don't make fun of Leah Thomas because that is some low hanging fruit and they get it. Okay. And then I say, what we need is we need men's sports for the traditional men, women's sports for the women and a new category for the new category, the X-Men and the crowd just <laughs> good. Do you, did you ever have anyone professionally tell you like take you aside and they're like listen we think you could be very successful but you can't tell these like conservative jokes did anybody give you advice like that yeah they they start with just like be your friend then they start blocking you on things then they start telling other people don't work with you so it's like a three-tiered approach wow. to try to shut you down i've been totally shut out by the so-called cool kids but i look like a cool kid and the audience sees me and likes me so they're like why don't they like this guy so i'm a big big problem for the left yeah, I love that. Let's do more of that. That's what yeah. we need to have. I think that's fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next time. All right. What an honor to sit down in front. That means I am one degree away from meeting the greatest by far best president of all time, believe me, you've had many presidents before me, but none as great, none who have loved the United States quite like me. Donald J. Trump, okay, much smarter than this sleepy idiot, Sleepy Joe, it's what they call him. Every time he talks, he starts to mumble, stutter, falls off the stage. And of course, to a Democrat, this is a great thing. It's very sad, very, very sad. But having someone with no brain, just a meat suit walking around voting how the left wants, that's what they're looking for. Look at John Fetterman. Look at Joe Biden. Look at the stupid, radical idiots on the left. Very sad. Very, very sad. Big league. Hey, did you know Joe Biden never had a childhood stutter? This is just something the mainstream media and the Democratic Party, but I repeat myself, completely made up to make stay-at-home moms and people that don't watch the news that closely just go, oh, yeah, I guess that's the explanation. But when you find out he never had a childhood stutter, does that make you upset? Or do you feel like, well, uh, at least they're trying to cover for him. For me, I don't like being lied to. I want to show you Joe Biden, how he speaks now and how he used to speak. You be the judge if he had a childhood stutter that went away for 75 years. No, no, I'm just saying, I just, I just found it interesting that uh, Biden's being a popular, a pop, a, 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 a cop, a, Biden's being an extremist. The people who are being repressed by that ugly white regime, we have favorites. Our loyalty is not to South Africa, it's to South Africans. And the South Africans are majority black. A pop, a, 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 a cop, a, 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 I hate to hear an administration and a secretary of state. Pa, a cop, a, a, Biden's being refusing to act on a morally abhorrent point. I hate to hear this country. I'm ashamed that this country. Pa, a cop, a, a, it is not to some stupid puppet government over there. Pa, a cop, a, a, Biden's being extremist. If you got tricked by the media, that's why you're here. It's okay. We're not going to make fun of you now because you had no idea. You had no way of knowing. Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Allen, Jimmy Stephen Colbert did not tell you what I just told you. Welcome to The Right Show, a support group 
for normal people. Speaking of fake disabilities, Democrats, the left, they love fake disabilities. They want you to be able to identify as something, and we all have to now live in your delusion based on what you identify as. There is a woman who is able-bodied but believes she identifies as a wheelchair-bound person. Is that fair? Is that logical? That is what the left brings you. If a man can be a woman and someone who's black can identify as white and white can identify as black and you can identify as a, a puppy and a furry, why not? Why not go to the doctor and see how much it'll cost to lop off your leg so you can live your real life in a wheelchair? Chloe is on a quest to find a surgeon willing to operate in order to paralyze her legs forever. I did find a surgeon uh, in, in another country who would be prepared to do femoral and sciatic nerve transactions to paralyze my legs. It would be at least $25,000. Where they desire to have some sort of body modification, but it's a sense that a person really wants to uh, lose some sort of ability that they have. So we have to ask ourselves, if a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man, uh, someone who's old can identify as young, someone, why not? Why not pay $25,000? All you got to do is remove the sciatic nerve, you inject it, you chop off the perfectly functional limbs, there's no difference from what other people are doing, and you ruin the functional limbs so you can live your best life, which is your worst life, which is your fake life, which you believe is your real life. I miss Tupac. What happened to thug life? That was the only thing we had to worry about in the 90s. But here we are, 2022, and the left, they always want to be marching forward. Progress, progress, progress. I'm going so far left. Whoa! And they fall off the cliff. Okay? That is why the right show exists. That is why we are here. Because someone has to push back, throw the yellow flag, and go, we're not doing this. The doctor who's willing to take that surgery so this person can live their true life, take $25,000 worth of payments, and cut off two totally healthy limbs should lose their license forever and never be allowed to practice in any single hospital. This also goes for a doctor who would do that to an eight-year-old boy or a 20-year-old man and try to make the men's sports and the women's sports all join the X-Men. If you agree, put it in the comments, or if you think this is great, let's keep progressing until we are all living the way we see ourselves, even if it's unhealthy. Put it in the comments. I would love to hear your arguments. Speaking of which, there is someone who is disabled and no one's doing anything about it. Instead, they elected him to president. Watch Joe Biden with his mental cognizance Remember, he's in charge of the nuclear codes. He's in charge of working out deals with other countries. He's in charge of what happens with the economy in many ways, and his decisions can affect your friends, your family, your job, and your taxes. Here comes Joe Biden with his favorite two words. With two words. Made in America. Made in America. Does he think it's made and America? Because he said it twice. Normally he said, let me start with two words. Made in America. Uh, three words, but you know what I meant. Let's go USA. You know. But he goes, made and America. Made and America. So does he think the phrase his whole life has been made and America? Or does he not know that made in America is three words. Please put in the comments while we play that one more time. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. Made in America. 
We have some comments coming in. The most with it president ever. Yes. Or maybe he thinks it's a made in America. I like that. I like that. This country is doomed. Magamandi says, God, help us. And that's why we want to highlight your comments because we're all feeling the same way. So we just come here and hang out together kind of like a, eventually we'll all be underground eating out of a can. And we'll be running away from what we don't understand. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. She moves. You know that song? In mysterious ways. Oh. All right. There is a guy named Kanye West. The radical left hates Kanye now, just like they hate Elon Musk, Donald Trump, people they always loved. Because if you go against the left on any one of their sacred cows, they will turn on you. Dave Chappelle knows. Joe Rogan knows. And now Kanye does too. Kanye West tells the truth about racism. I don't use the real word because then my page gets banned and then I can't get my videos viral. So I talk like a baby and we're going to talk about racism and the N word and the B word and the C word and the D word and the E word and the F word and the G word and sometimes H I J K elemental P word. Watch what Kanye says and see if you agree. And I want to know this first, which group do you think is the most discriminated group in the USA? Let me say it again. Which group? do you think is the most discriminated on in the USA? Please answer in the comments. Kanye West is about to tell you now. There's nobody that gets judged more than a straight white male. The straight white male has the least amount of a platform to even speak. A straight white male can't say, my wife hurt me today. And because people will say, well, you're hurting women. A straight white male can't say, hey, a black employee didn't come in to work on time because then people will say you're racist. A straight white male can't speak on a homosexual person because uh, they'll say. There you have it. He told the truth. If you're perceived and I know this firsthand, as a straight white male in the United States, you're not going to get any of the black privileges, no Latino privileges. Um, I'm Persian, but people say you look white. Therefore, we're going to consider you a white racist slave owner who held my people down, even though my dad got here 40 years ago from Iran. I'm still now tied in with uh, some guy who owned a slave. Okay. My whole thing is if I'm going to get blamed for it, then I want to do it. Okay. If I'm going to already pay the price, then come on over and do some chores. So then you can hate me for what I made you do. Cause I have had no help around this house. Okay. I have been dusting. I have been uh, vacuuming. I have been using the Clorox wipes. I do my own laundry, my own dishes. Okay. So I want to know where is this person that I've oppressed and why are they not the hell over here right now? Get on down. Get on down here. Come on over from Wakanda or from Oakland. Get Kamala Harris over here. Come clean my house. Okay. Because I was on that bus, Joe Biden, and you tried to keep me off that bus. Okay. These Kanenes, a Kanene, by the way, see, we all know Karen. Karen is a white woman who complains and annoys people, calls the management. Well, there is other races of Karens. There's Latina Karens, Karenitas, okay? They're like, you don't know what I did. And then there's black Karens, Kanenes. Kanenes will tell you that you made them a slave and you owe them something because they want something for free. The black Karen is a Kanene. Everyone knows that, hashtag Kanene. The point being, these Kanenes want something free even though we didn't do anything to them. They just don't want to work. So my whole thing is Kanye West, not Kanene West, but Kanye West has totally figured it out. He's seen the matrix and he knows that as a black person, he has privilege. He can say words other people can't say. If he went to get a job, he would get promoted because of affirmative action programs. If he wanted to go to college, there's a little process where he can maybe get some better student loans, student grants, scholarships, because everyone in America is trying to help others, but there is no process for the straight white male. And as a famous half Persian comedian, Nobody's looking out for me because what they say is, Kayvon, mm -mm, you owe us because you look too white. Well, I have news for you, Kanene. There's no such thing as white.
because an Italian is different than a Russian person. An immigrant who just got here from Iran is totally different than someone who came here from Spain 200 years ago. And someone from Australia does not share the same heritage and stories and experiences as someone from Russia. So learn that there's no such thing as white, but there is such thing as kanenes. We have had far too much fun, but the fun is going to keep ramping up. Why do I say that? Because my buddy can do an amazing thing with technology. My buddy can take famous celebrities' faces and swap them onto your favorite movies digitally in a way that you would not even be able to tell what is happening. What am I talking about? Okay, picture the movie Bridesmaids. Have you seen Bridesmaids? Put it in the comments. Okay, my buddy Brian Monarch is able to swap Ryan Reynolds' face and Owen Wilson's face onto the Bridesmaids characters as if it was an all-male remake of the movie Bridesmaids. Well, once he did that with technology, he wanted the voiceover to sound like those characters, so he pitched me to be Owen Wilson because sometimes, you guys, wow, it's so cool to be here. Sometimes I can just do a good Owen Wilson impression. If you don't know Owen Wilson, his nose is kind of like that. He's got a brother named Luke. And wow, he's just friends with Ben Stiller. It's fantastic. I want you guys to watch me doing Owen Wilson, playing the part of the character in the movie Bridesmaids. Check it out. No, it's too bad Lillian couldn't play with us today. Poor thing. She's so busy. Oh, I know. You know, she's not really that into sports. Even when we were little, she didn't like anything that was too competitive. She certainly enjoys playing tennis now. It's funny how people change, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Do people really change? Mm, I think they do. Yeah, but I mean, they still stay who they are, pretty much. I think we change all the time. I think we stay the same, but grow, I guess, a little bit. I think if you're growing, then you're changing. But I mean, we're changing from who we are, which we always stay as. Mm, not really. I don't think so. I think so. I don't. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. My buddy Brian Monarch put it down. Hilarious. I can do a good um, Owen Wilson impression. Wow. Hey, wasn't that a whole lot of fun? I told you the fun never ends when you're hanging with talented people. You're having a lot of fun on these uh, comedy shows, on these tours, and then you get to kind of mingle talents outside of just straight stand-up. That's why we do the right show every week. That's why we do voiceovers. That's why we write songs sometimes, music and poetry, whatever it is, just constantly working your art, your artistic brain, and coming up with new things. Speaking of which, I want everyone to go order the essential comedy special, okay, with a pre-order. It's the holidays, why not? But I want you to see something. I wanna show you how to do it one more time, and then we'll end with a comedy clip. How does that sound? Okay, check this out. Go right here to gofundme.com slash essential cave on. Okay, we scroll on down, and you can see right here, this is the new comedy special, GoFundMe.com, Essential Cave On. This new one-hour comedy special is hilarious. We talk about things you're not allowed to talk about on mainstream media. And the jokes, I put my special up against anything you're going to watch on Netflix, minus the top 2%, okay? So you might say, well, Dave Chappelle's is my favorite, and I really love Bill Burr. I'll put myself right under those. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom like, oh, and then this guy and this guy and this guy. But it's top 2% of all comedians, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So go check it out. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I'll just give you a refund. I really don't care. But I want you to see one of my old comedy clips, uh, which is only three years old, but I call it old. Now, look, you guys know what TikTok is. You take a video, 45 seconds long, boom, it goes viral. Well, YouTube got in the process of that. YouTube got in on the party, and they want to do a thing called shorts. Shorts are the same thing, a minute or less, go viral. Well, then Facebook and Instagram said, we want to do it too. So they call them Reels. So I got TikTok shorts and Reels. I want you to see my latest one. This one already has about 70,000 views in less than three days. Take you got to age gracefully. That's what I've decided. You know, wrinkles are coming in. I'm going to leave them. I'm a man. Going to have wrinkles. I'm going to use them for good. If anybody needs help getting around town, I'm just going to use it like a road map. Where are you trying to go, player? Where you want to go? <laughs> The airport, La Cienega, make a left on Manchester. You'll find it. 
you get lost, come see my forehead. No big deal, right? That's right. I can't wait to go bald, helping people around the globe. It doesn't matter. Right, sir? Yes. No big deal. There you have it. Thank you guys for tuning in. This was so much fun. We actually got a donation. Now, if you don't know this on YouTube, you can give a thing called Super Chats. And I want to give a shout out to our Super Chat. A.S. Laughed at the word Karenita. So A.S. threw a tip in the bucket. Now, if you're on Facebook, you can leave stars. Bing, make it rain stars. Same thing. And if you don't want to do any of those, you can just pre-order the new comedy special and I will send it to you before anyone else sees it. Pre-order it. Now, that's where you do it. We tell truth through comedy. We are the only podcast that wakes America up with laughter. I'm off to Huntington Beach, California. I hope you'll come. After this, we hang out for a few minutes on locals.com. So go to caveoncomedy.locals.com and ask me anything. They don't ban speech there so we can say whatever we want and no one's coming after us thank you for tuning in visit your local podcast subscriber and give us five stars you know we love it and we'll see you next week with the right show peace
Please hang up and try.